This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Talking about content delivery networks tonight. Um, does anybody use anything like that right now? No. Well, this is good then. This is good. Uh, so maybe we'll maybe we'll learn something then. All right. So content delivery networks. Let's get the boring stuff out of the way. This is my pitch. I'm a new SEO company. Uh, we just started. Um, so basically, um, the niche market I'm trying to uh, get into is the uh, you know smaller based businesses um, because there's a, there's definitely. Um, a lack of SEO company talent, I would say. I don't think they do a very good job. So um, we've experienced some really good results with our uh, customers, uh, much faster than the typical SEO company, um, you know, sees, uh, you know, within within the organic search results of uh, Google. So if you're ever interested, go go there. But you know, I'd rather talk about content delivery networks. So. Um, CDNs, uh, a content delivery network, is a system of distributed servers that deliver web pages and other web content to a user based on the geographic locations of the user, the origin of the web page, and a content delivery server. So, um, does anybody here actually, you know, they make websites for people and then host them for them? Okay, so you guys have never heard of Cloudflare or anything like that? You use it? And you like it? Yeah, um, I mean, there's, you know, th this is what I try to, try to um, do with this presentation was just, you know, t to gauge the audience, see if anybody's using it because, you know, once you actually, you know, learn about this stuff, it gets way more complex and there's a lot of things you can do to um, deliver fresh content to your customers, you know, um, and essentially if you're trying to start up like, you know, like myself, um, Cloudflare comes with a free uh, account. Uh, and I think it's actually great for a lot of the small businesses I deal with, but you know, it's not, um, if you're working with like enterprise level people, um, you might not get away with it, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. So basically, um, you know, so somebody here, who do you guys use for a, uh, a host? If you want to tell me who you use, um, does anybody want to tell me? Yeah. Linode, so, so you do, um, you have your own uh, virtual private server or you do, you have a VPS? Okay, because um, it depends, some people, um, does anybody here like use GoDaddy or anything like that and just and literally just sign their customers up for a domain? Sure. Okay, so I, I want to talk about that because um, when you do that, um, you do realize that with a VPS, he um, is, it's a little bit better than um, what you guys are doing because you know a, a virtual private server will give um, you know you know, it, it dedicates you know your websites um, you know pretty much uh, it de dedicates that server or that instance of that server to your customers. But if you sign up for GoDaddy, for instance, you could have um, they could be hosting hundreds of different people's uh, websites on your own on your same server. So you are um, essentially, um, you know, you're limited to, uh, to a specific set of, uh, set of resources. I've heard some people get, you know, you know they get charged um, for, you know, a limited amount of bandwidth per month. Does, does anybody get, get those type of charges? No. You do? Who do you use? Okay. And, they char and they charge you, like you can't use, uh, you can't go above a certain amount of bandwidth? Oh, really? Okay. So, yeah, this is where uh, CDNs will actually uh, definitely uh, help you out then. So, say you're using something like that, um, you know, and on the picture on the left here, um, you know, pretty much if you don't have a contact delivery network uh, set up in place, all requests from the clients that are, you know, trying to access your website go directly to your server. And with a content delivery network like Cloudflare, Mac CDN, you see those, um, you know, those other servers over there. Those, those are in, you know, they, these companies buy servers and host them all over in strategic geographic locations. Um, so, what I like about Cloudflare is um, obviously, cause it, you know, that, per, that the, the the free portion is really good for uh, you know specific uh, you know companies that you're working with. 
But um, I mean, so basically, what it's going to do here is going to it's going to uh, cache your uh, you know, your static content and deliver it to people um, wherever they're based. So say um, you know, Cloudflare has servers all over. So say they have a uh, server in, um, you know, they have a data center in uh, Los Angeles, say. Um, you know, if you, there's somebody local from, from that side uh, trying to access your website, you know, it's going to get served from that Cloudflare um, database rather than, say, you actually were hosting the website from Boston. You, you get what I'm saying? So um, it, it, the, my slides will, like, it will uh, definitely explain it better. So... Um, Right here it says content delivery networks are great for storing your static resources and in the right application can significantly decrease your server load. So right here I have a picture, you know, this is taken from the Cloudflare website. Cloudflare CDN caches the following types of static content by extension for all types by default. Does anybody know what static content is when pertaining to your website? Yeah, so it's, um, so here you obviously see uh, CSS, JavaScript, um, photos and stuff like that. Instead of having those sitting on your server, you can actually have those sit in the distributed networks of Cloudflare. And uh, when you know, so basically, what you're trying to uh, do here is uh, optimize for speed. So the less times, the, the less uh, the amount of requests that you send back to the original server is going to greatly boost, uh, you know, your uh, your server, your your website server speed. So, um, you know, let's take, for example, the Cloudflare um, free version, you know, it's, it will, it will, um, it will store JavaScript. Um, I don't think, I believe it doesn't do HTML, but it will also store your files. And so, um, you know, it will alleviate a lot of um, requests back to the server, which can actually um, slow down the server, depending on how many websites you have running on it. Um, I also like the added security features that Cloudflare has. Sounds like I'm trying to sell you guys Cloudflare, but I'm really not. Um, so not, not only can you reap the benefits of decreased server load, but using a CDN as a proxy server to your website provides additional features as well. For example, from the Cloudflare dashboard, you can monitor where requests from your website are coming from, as well as set different security levels depending upon IP address and geolocation. Uh, for example, um, I saw traffic coming from um, Russia the other day on some of my uh, client servers. So, uh, uh, in the free, in the free uh, dashboard, I wasn't able to actually um, dis, you know, completely ban people from, uh, from Russia, but you can set different uh, you know, uh, levels where uh, you know, maybe these people will get a challenge uh, and they have to pass that. So, uh, what's great about Cloudflare is, um, you know, bots and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff is, um, you know, taken care of uh, in the Cloudflare servers and they won't allow it to pass through to your actual server. So, let's see here. This is, this is, this is a site that I'm making for my friend who's a DJ in, in Boston. <laughs> so, I just wanted to show you. Um, so, security-wise, um, I know people are, you know, definitely uh, worried about getting their site hacked and stuff like that. So what Cloudflare will do is, um, it, you know, say you have your, you know, your server here, Cloudflare sits in the middle, and then where your clients are coming from. So all the requests are sent to Cloudflare's um, server, pretty much, uh, if you set it up the right way. So what I'm doing here, say I'm a hacker, I want to, you know, hack somebody's website. What's the first thing I do? You know, I, I'm going to go into my Linux console and I'm going to, uh, the command is dig. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is finding out the IP address of um, that website. So um, from there, I would go and try to see, you know, okay, I have the IP address. So now, um, you know, let's see where this server is being hosted. I'm not sure if I even put the picture in here, but. Okay, so yeah, what I did after that was, you know, I got the IP address, but. I did a who is on it and guess what comes up? Cloudflare. So, you know, somebody that's, you know, trying to plan out uh, an attack on your website essentially ends up with this. Um, I'm sure if you're, you know, if you're a really savvy hacker, you know, um, <laughs> there's easy ways to get around that. But um, what's funny is a lot of times that where there are security breaches, 
a lot of the people really aren't that talented <laughs> and they just use uh, you know scripts they find online so this is this could be enough just to deter uh, a specific person that might want to hack your uh, hack your website the, you know because Cloudflare is a big company and they say hey maybe they have the resources to track me down um, so basically I, you know if you weren't using Cloudflare say um, who uses GoDaddy you use GoDaddy I'd be able to yeah I'd be able to find out you know I'll be like okay well they're using GoDaddy and then I'd go from there and then um, what's great about um, uh, Cloudflare actually protect, protects you from SQL injection, which is actually, um, that's also a, another hacking feature where people will, you know, they'll try to, um, SQL is a database, so you can literally um, type commands into the browser and try to um, access the SQL database of websites, and sometimes it works. That's how people get hacked, and uh, Cloudflare uh, actually prevents that. So that's another uh, positive there. So let's see, hold on. All right, so has any, does anybody use a caching plugin for WordPress right now? What do you guys use? What is it? I don't I even, I haven't, I haven't even used that. Does anybody, does anybody use like WP Supercache or anything like that? Um, do you guys, you know, I, I know for instance that Supercache doesn't really, um, you know, give you that many options, uh, you know, from the dashboard itself. Um, other than, you know, just doing any generic things, do you guys do any customization to, to that? Or do you just pretty much download it and activate it? Yeah, yeah, th but that's what most people are doing. And, and you know, that's what I like about uh W3 total cache, if you actually download it, um, it, it might, you know, actually, um, you know, make you realize that there's a lot more to cache than just, uh, you know, just clicking the button. There's a lot of things you can do to, um, you know, really use cache to take off, um, you know, server, you, you know, you know um, load off your server, and it, it actually gets really advanced. So, um, you know, I'm not going to teach you guys everything here because I'll keep you here all, all, all night and probably because I couldn't even explain most of this stuff, <laughs> some of this stuff because it gets, it gets really in depth. But, the, you know, what I'm really trying to, you know, um, get across here is that, you know, you should definitely start learning about this stuff if you're trying to, you know, create efficient sites. So let's see what I have here. WD Total Cache comes with various options and features and can definitely seem more confusing than other plugins like WP, Super Cache, etc. Implementing a caching plugin along with a CDN can greatly reduce the amount of work your server has to do to serve pages to your users. Implementing a tiered caching and minification system. Um, so does anybody know what minification is? I know I know these these guys do. They're, okay. A a after, the, after that, um, uh, presentation. I was. I, I realized that there's a, there's a lot more to this stuff than than, uh, than meets the eye, because um, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there. Do you, does anybody use themes to um, like you, you guys purchase a theme, and uh, to make your sites right? Yeah, these guys. You know what they're doing is they they create the themes. So like you know we need these we, we need these type of people. So. Um, so basically, uh, minification would be, all right, um, let's see here. We'll, we'll, we'll get to minification. So these are different types of, um, of caching. You have page caching, database caching, object caching, browser caching. Does anybody know what, what, these, what these do? No, so well, definitely, you know, look it up. I, I recommend downloading W3 Total Cache. I have some links in here that I'll show you afterwards. But um, so, so say for instance, database-wise, um, why you would want to implement a database cache would be uh, to prevent, you know, um, running the same scripts over and over when they can be served from a, uh, you know, a preserved file on your on your on your server per se. Um, What's, uh, Cloudflare doesn't do that, but what we're gonna get into here, the minification is gonna make your page faster uh, as well. I think I have that on the next slide. All right, so minification. Um, compressing your JavaScript, CSS, and HTML is a great way of speeding up your website. 
A smaller file size makes your site load faster for users. Your code will be difficult to plagiarize or copy. Uh, I don't really know if that's true. Um, so all unnecessary characters are, are removed, leaving only what is needed to make your code work. Um, let's see. So basically, um, in W3 Total Cache, if you, if, if you download it, uh, there is an option for JavaScript, CSS, and, H, and uh, HTML minification. If you couple this with Cloudflare, um, Cloudflare actually offers the minification process as well. So if you go home and do this tonight, do not um, uh, select both. You can, I, I recommend trying to offload as much as possible on the Cloudflare server. I mean, why not? It's free. And um, you know, the more resources you have in your server, to you know, are, are better. So I, I would I would say to do that. In, in, in my honest opinion. So, all right. So instead of doing you know my own slide, which would have taken you know eighty slides to make a, a new thing, there's this right here. So we could go over this. So how to set up Cloudflare? Is anybody interested in setting up Cloudflare? Because I, I won't even go over it, <laughs> but I really think it's it's definitely a good thing because it it offers you know automatically overnight you're gonna have a um, you know a, an added shield of security on your website uh, for for free totally and it's gonna um, all your images that you have, that you have on there it's gonna offload all that so um, you know say somebody say you have a popular whatever you have a blog and you like to you know post pictures or whatever. You know, and, and it's across the, you know, somebody from across this, the, uh, the country is, uh, you know, is viewing it. Um, there's a potential that uh, they don't even have to access, you know, pretty much anything from your actual website server. They can get it served straight from Cloudflare, which will make it a lot faster. So um, that's the, you know, the essence that I'm trying to portray here. So let's see. Does anybody know what Mac CDN is? Well, um, we won't even talk about that right now because that will that'll take too much time. But definitely, if you're interested, look into both because they do have, um, you know, they, they are for different types of services. So, so pretty much all you have to do to set this up, um, go to cloudflare.com um, and literally you type in your email address, um, choose a username, password, the legal thing, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Nobody reads that. And then, um, so after that, you go to add a website, whatever website you guys have, um, plug it in and then click add a website. And literally what it does, it starts scanning your, um, your DNS servers and, um, you know, pretty much just, um, checking out your website for, you know, whatever, whatever they need. So, um, when that's done, I don't even know, they might even play a funny video for you to watch, but, um, so. Say, so say for instance, um, you know, if you're on GoDaddy or wh whatever, whoever you're using, all you have to do is just go into your DNS files, and um, Cloudflare will it will pop up on the screen. It will tell you. It will just it will say um, add these two name servers to your um, to your DNS file. That's and that's literally all you have to do. So just you know um, delete the delete the the current ones that you have. And put the Cloudflare ones in that they, that they give you, and literally um, right after you start doing that, Cloudflare is going to start building and um, uh, start storing your static files on their server. And they have they have servers all over the world, so like immediately you're you're start you know you're you're already starting to offload um, you know uh, requests to your to your own server. So see free that's awesome um, you know. Does anybody have HTTPS on their on their website? Yeah. Uh, um, so what I've I've noticed I haven't even tried to to, uh, to configure it with HTTPS, but I believe you can't use the free ver version. You have to pay a a extra to to get full SSL. But from a security standpoint, um, I, um, you know some people in the in, in the community don't really like it per se because um, when you do HTTPS that means um, you know you're supposed to have you know the, the client that's you know on the website they see the lock up there they think that you know they're on an encrypted channel all the way through but with C with uh, you know like a CDN like Cloudflare 
what actually happens is, uh, say I, you know, from here I request whitehouse.gov, um, and just say they're being hosted on Cloudflare. What that does, it, it creates an encrypted channel from here to, uh, you know, to the Cloudflare server, but then it's decrypted there. So um, that's where some people have uh, an issue with it, but I, I feel like if you trust Cloudflare, which I think they're a pretty reputable company, um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see a problem with it. Um, but, you know, there, there is another thing where, so say, say, you, say um, the website you're using, uh, they, can, they can get an HTTPS certificate but it doesn't really have to be valid, I, I, I found out. So um, potentially if you're connecting to a Cloudflare server, um, just because it says HTTPS in it doesn't mean that it's, it really is because um, if the host of the website um, didn't uh, install it correctly, you know, your traffic could be getting sent unencrypted back to the, uh, you know, from Cloudflare back to the um, actual server, if that makes any sense. Someone said Google would I, I don't know about uh, penalizing per se, but I set up everybody cause since since I do SEO. It, I know that it gives you a boost. I don't think you get they're getting penalized, but I think it's really smart. Um, you know, some people say not to, you know, like oh well, I'm not serving any uh, important data o o over the internet, but um, I think it's just probably a smart idea to go ahead and, and do it now because. There's gonna, you know, it's it's gonna be there's gonna be a shift where, you know, everything is HTTPS. Um, I don't see a problem with with doing it at all, other than. You've noticed if there was a drop off in signups for newsletter. And yeah. You went and checked that, and it said your information may not be on a secure site. So. Oh really? You changed that, so now they sign up seamlessly. Okay. Yeah. So I mean. Um, I, I, I honestly recommend it, but um, you know some people are wary of it at the moment because um, the, the one thing that I, I notice a lot of people are like you know if they have good rankings in Google they don't want to switch over to, to it, but there there are ways to mitigate that and um, you know there's been studies done that um, you know you may see a significant drop off but your results actually recover um, fairly quickly. So all you have to do is just yeah if you have a a competent person, um, you know, handling the SEO pretty much because you can notify Google of all this stuff that's going on. If you're switching over, you can notify them, so it, it really won't uh, affect it too much. So, so yeah, uh, let's see here. Changing name service to Cloudflare, literally, it's 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 that easy. You see this right here? It says use custom name servers. I think this is for a Bluehost account. Um, but it's all it's all the same. Just just find your DNS um, files. Uh, maybe yours says name servers, whatever. Put the put the Cloudflare ones in, and boom, you're done. So let's see. And I hope anybody that's de uh, developing sites don't ever do that, because I'll never click on that. <laughs> I I hate those. I I. I don't know. I don't know why anybody even thinks that they they actually work. If you put those on the site, I'm not buying anything from you. Um, what do you go for? Huh? What do you go for? Um, you know, I, I don't I don't want um, it, it, you know, I just like to read good content and, and instead of having something come flying up in my face. <laughs> I don't I, I I don't like those. So hold on. Uh, so here we go. This is the W3 Total Cash settings. So if you're on a shared uh, server, like I was saying, that means you're being hosted, you know, with several hundred other websites. So um, you know you have to be weary of the actual um, settings that you uh, put in here <clears throat> because it depends on your host, but um, it could actually increase your server load and. Um, actually slow down the website um, so let's see all right so you guys can literally go go on Google <laughs> there's, there's that's what's great about WordPress is you know there's so many um, you know do-it-yourself type things here but this is what th these are recommend recommended settings for shared hosting 
Um, so they have the page cache, uh, which will you know save a copy of your actual page and keep that um, you know keep that saved. But what's funny is you know this this guy over here who has a VPS, you can do uh, you know some things that people on shared hosting can't with your with your cache. Um, you could actually store it in memory, which is faster than uh, if you're on a shared host, you can only, um, you know, save that stuff to what's called disk, you know, like disk enhanced. Uh, so um, there's, you know, there's, a, there's definitely if you're building websites for people and you're hosting for them, I would just say spend the money and may, maybe get a, de you know, a dedicated hosting program um, and just get off of shared hosting. You know what I mean? It's, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the need for it. So let's see. Leave minified database and object caching disabled. Object caching, um, these guys can tell you all about objects. Um, so, so for instance, an object would be like a, like a document, right? Or like a, like a file. Um, so the reason why they say for shared um, hosting not to do that is because, you know, it's gonna create a large uh, amount of storage and, you know, your server may not be able to handle that. So, um, yeah, don't do that. Uh, you can try though. I mean, some some hosts are better than, than others. Uh, you might even want to just you know um, contact customer support and say, listen, I'm uh, I'm trying to set up you know W3 Total Cash. Can you tell me what you recommend for um, my setup that I currently have? Um, so yeah, Let's see what else I can recommend here. Oh yeah. So, anyways, W3 Total Cache actually has a um, feature where you can hook it hook it up right to uh, Cloudflare, and uh, literally all you have to do. Uh, let's see if it says right here. This might confuse you though, because because um, so Cloudflare isn't a typical CDN per se. So um, you know, skip that. Do uh, leave it disabled. But what you would want to do is um, if when you install it, um, go to the extensions tab underneath W3 Total Cache. And it, there's a thing for enable Cloudflare. So all you have to do is just, um, you know, you're, you've already signed up for Cloudflare. Go into your account, and under, underneath there will be a section uh, for an API key. Just copy and paste it and put it in here where it says API key with your domain on it, and then there you go. Um, remember to, you know, make sure, you know, if you want to do CSS, JavaScript, and HTML minification, uh, which I recommend. Um, just, just you can test it out. Uh, you know, do it from your, you know, do it from your server, and then you know, turn it off, and then maybe uh, allow um, Cloudflare to do it and see what what gives you better results. So, you know, you might be surprised. But um, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, that that that's a good one. Um, so, are you using a current uh, caching plugin right now? Okay, um, but even if you do with even without like uh, Cloudflare, you like Im immediately. Um, I I think I noticed. Um, it's turning off the caching when you're in Cloudflare. Yes, exactly. So um, so say you so say you go into the CSS of your um, your theme and you want to change something, um, and you know you click save in, in the editor, and then you go you say oh let's go click uh, and visit my site. You don't see it. You know. It's because the cache, you know, you need to empty the cache. Um, you know, what that will do is um, it will stop routing all of your, you know, your information through Cloudflare, but make sure you, you know, empty the cache um, within your own server as well. Um, what I usually do if, if say, if I'm built, you know, you know, working on a site, I'll just uh, completely put it on development mode with, with Cloudflare and then I'll disable um, W3 total cache, and then you can see everything right away. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to see all, all the uh, changes that you make. Um, other than that, let's see. Does, it, does anybody know? I mean, you guys are going to have to go in and read this because it, get, it actually gets really involved, but um, it's definitely worth uh, looking into. But has anybody ever heard of anything like um, lazy load? You've heard of Lazy Load? Do you use it? It's actually like it's a it's a it's a free plugin. It actually speeds up and optimizes the site. Uh, say you have um, you know multiple uh, photos and whatnot on on your site. Um, 
it will it will it will only load them as the person scrolls down on the site. So I'm all about optimization. That's because that's what what I do. So it's literally a free plugin. Um, you know, just just type it into the uh, to the plugin uh, window. Just type in lazy load. You can install it, and it will um, you know it will start working right away. Um, pretty much, that's about it. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but that's that's CDNs and uh, Cloudflare. Cool. <laughs> What's your website again? Uh, Dizzycat.net. Yes, uh, so we actually, um, you know, I was going to cover something about SEO before, but uh, she, she asked me to do the, um, you know, this, this CDN thing here, but I'm a huge fan of it, and I honestly, I'm all about optimization, especially because um, a huge portion of uh, SEO ranking now is uh, making sure that your site is fast and optimized, um, you know, because it creates a, a user-friendly environment. So, um, you know, it's definitely something to look into, but if, you know, it's, if, if that's over your head, we'll take care of it for you. So, dizzycat.net guys, and slicejack.com, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, these guys are awesome. So, that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys.